Today we're going to work on one of my favorite things to play on the ukulele. It's called a Roomba pattern. This is based off different flamenco techniques and styles of music, and there are a lot of different ways to do this, but this one just happens to be my favorite to play on the ukulele. Now, it sounds something like this. Now, to play this, we're going to start with an A chord. To do that, take your middle finger, place it on the second fret of the G string, index finger, place it on the first fret of the C string. Now, to look at the pattern itself, I like to use a visual aid. It looks something like this. Now, this is based off of the different symbols that I use on my Ultimate Ukulele strumming course. And if you'd like to check out more patterns like this broken down, feel free to check it out in the link down below. But what you'll notice is that we have one and, two and, three and, four and, and we're going to break down what happens on each one of these beats. To start, very simple, on one we're going to do a down strum, and we're going to do that with our index finger. So playing that A chord, we're going to practice just doing a down with the index. Now what's really important as you do this down is that you leave your hand curled together except for that index finger going down over the strings. The reason for this is that we're going to be needing those other fingers in just a moment. So we have that down, and then we have this sort of dotted arrow on the and. What that means is to start bringing your hand back up, but miss the strings. Now here's the secret sauce to make this technique work so well. As you're kind of missing up with your index finger, you're going to start jetting your pinky finger over the four strings. And then you're going to use your ring, your middle, and then your index following. And you'll notice this is what's actually shown on beat two of this pattern. Those lines coming out of the arrow are signifying different fingers going down with our pinky, ring, middle, and then finally our index going down at the moment of that downbeat on two. This is the hardest part of the pattern and it's using a technique that I like to call the sweep. Now, if you've done this technique before, great. If not, there's a video down below that you can check out that goes more into detail with it. But essentially what it is, is that you're going to be having your fingers curled using your pinky finger to go over the four strings, followed by your ring, then your middle, and then finally your index. It's really important to prioritize keeping these very even as they go. If you get something like this happening, that's no good. We want one, two, three, four, very clear, concise individual motions. And when they speed up, you can hear that articulation is still there. This is a hard technique. It takes some practice. And it can be helpful to actually practice on other things. So if you're driving, you can do it on your steering wheel or on your pant leg or whatever. It can be really, really difficult to get those finger movements without spending some time with it. So once we have that though, that is now beat two that's going to be played is using that sweep technique. Now if that's too hard, it's okay to kind of use your hand all together and just kind of <laughs> strike the strings. Although for the best effect, make sure you're using that sweep technique. It's also called raschiato a lot of times in the classical guitar world. Then after we've done that down, we're going to come back up on the and of two. And then on beat three, you'll notice we've got this X in a box. What does this mean? Well, this is called a chunk. Now, if you haven't chunked before, there's a video on that too. A lot of different techniques going into this Roomba pattern. But what a chunk is, is this. It's the act of muting the strings while striking them. And in a really quick way to look at it is that you're going to be using either the palm back here or up here. There's lots of different ways to chunk, but you're going to essentially mute the strings one way or another as your fingers are striking them. I like to use the back palm method. I think it gives a chunkier chunk. And what that looks like is as my hand is coming down, I'm going to use my middle and ring fingers to strike the strings as the palm mutes it. So if I go at the perfect time, it sounds like this. If I go a little early with my strum, it'll sound like this. And you can hear that that's because my mute is not there when the fingers are striking. Again, for more help on that technique, check out the chunking video in the description below. But after I do that chunk now, I'm going to come back up, and then I'm going to go down with the index, and back up again with the index. So when we look at all of these four beats, or these eight motions that are taking place, it should look something like this really, really slow. Down, miss, starting the sweep, 
up, chunk, up, down, up, down, sweep, up, chunk, up, down, up. I'm just going to get gradually speed up as I go through so you can kind of hear it. favorite part about this technique is you only get better with it over time. I've been doing this technique for many years now and I'll still have a day where I start to do it and be like, hey, that's the best I've ever done it. So there's hope as you're practicing it that it'll only improve over time. Now to really make this pop, we want to introduce a second chord. We just played our A chord to start. The other chord is called a B flat major seven. To play that, take your ring finger, place it on the third fret of the G string, your middle finger here to the second fret of the C string. Finally, your index finger here on the first fret of the E string. So we have three, two, one, and then zero on the A. Go ahead and strum that. You can hear really nice flamenco sound with this. And we're going to do the same pattern. So down this. When you're comfortable with this pattern and this chord, you can go back and forth between your A chord and your B flat major 7 chord. And there is the Roomba pattern. If you want to hear a song that uses this technique, check out the link down below. I know I've mentioned a lot of links down there, but there are a lot of different techniques that go into this particular pattern. Now, I can't wait to play this more, so I'm going to end this video so I can go practice. I hope you can do the same. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.